Hello and welcome to Hello and welcome to Wild Ginger Running Gear Chat. We're live, it's Tuesday at 1 p.m. and today we are going to talk about waterproof jackets. Next week we're going to cover waterproof trousers, so hold your questions for then. But this week we're going to be covering waterproof jackets. So first of all, I'm just going to do a bit of a recap on the different types of waterproof jacket that you can get and the one that you're most often offered for trail running. Um, I'm going to go through the features that you'll want to look for in a waterproof jacket. And then I'm going to give you some examples of ones that I've tried um, in previous tests when I was working on Trail Running Magazine and um, the ones that I currently use as well. So I've got a whole host of waterproofs here to show you so I can give you some examples um, and then I just want to um, I've just got a whole page there's probably about five or six really good examples that I want to give to you at the end um, so I'll start talking um, after each little section so after the five types after the features and after the examples um, I'll take your questions so keep the questions coming um, in the chat there and I'll do my best to answer all of them um, so so why do we want a waterproof jacket in the first place, right? We still want to run whenever it's raining. So especially now as it's getting really dark and cold and wintry outside, we want to be motivated to get outside. And what better to do that than a good waterproof that's going to keep your core temperature up. It's going to be, it's going to be as waterproof as it can be. I will get to that in a minute because there's, there's definite issues around breathability and actual waterproofness that I, I really want to share with you some true and honest thoughts. Um, and you've got to be able to modify your jacket on the run so it's got to have the right features. So, so just to help you choose um, in the shop, it can be overwhelming. So just going to go through, there's five different types of waterproof that I've identified. So first of all, bit of a funny one, bin bag. So you've all been at the start of a race, um, usually a road race, I would say. I've been at the start of a road race and been really cold, but I know that once I start running, I'm going to be absolutely fine. So I will get a bin bag, I'll cut a hole for my neck, I'll cut holes for my arms, and I'll just wear that on the start line. And then I'll, um, I'll, I'll crumple it up and I'll maybe give it to somebody as I leave if I've got spectators, um, or if I pass a bin, I'll put it in a bin. Um, what I will not do is... Uh, drop it on the floor because that's bad um, so I'll just pop it in my pocket so bin bag is the first layer of waterproofing that we all we all know and love it's very cheap um, very not durable at all <laughs> but it's it's waterproof and so you can use them you could even wrap one of these you could even fold up one of these put it in your bottom of your backpack for absolute emergency wear because they definitely they keep you warm they keep the wind off and they keep some amount of rain off so it's worth thinking about bin bag similar um, to a survival bag only survival bags you pay a lot more for and they've they've got thermal properties as well so that's one layer fabric um waterproof bin bag there we go then we've got a two layer waterproof so a two layer is basically um the outer fabric with a membrane or coated bonded to, to it and then there'll be a mesh to protect that inner layer so i've got an example of one of these this is my husband's biking jacket. So they, there's the outer layer. And then you can see inside that there's the white layer is waterproof. And then there's this black mesh over the top of it. So this mesh is, it's not stuck down, it moves around. Um, so this mesh layer is, it's basically quite heavy and it's quite bulky as well. So for that reason, you don't get, I haven't seen any waterproof jackets from any of the major brands uh, for trail runners. Um, you wouldn't use a mesh lining like this. So I just wanted to cover it just so that you're aware that this is what a two layer jacket looks like. So we'll fling that over there because we don't need to talk about that one anymore. Then one of the most common jackets for trail runners will be a 2.5 layer jacket. And that basically means it's the same as the last one so it's an outer fabric with a membrane or a coating bonded to it to make it waterproof and then you've got um, either a coating or a print applied to the surface to protect the waterproofing um, uh, it's lighter it's more packable but that is less durable than a mesh so um, one jacket a jacket that uses that is the one behind me just here so this is the jacket I was using yesterday in London actually so this is the arm halo and it's a 2.5 layer jacket so you can see the outer layer that's one layer you can see the inner layer the waterproof layer that's the second layer and then they will have applied a coating there's no print on here you know sometimes you can get a waterproof jacket and it's got little dots all over 
or a pattern, that's the 0.5 layer. So this one must be a coating because you can't actually see it, but that is just there to protect the waterproof layer just whilst it comes in contact with all the oils and the salts from your skin and just wear and tear as well. So this is what a 2.5 layer jacket looks like. Um, and these are really packable. So you can see how packable that is compared to the mesh jacket. Um, fold down really, really well, super light. And this is the jacket you'll most often see for trail running. So I do just wanna cover one more type of jacket, which, which not really controversially, but I tend to use these a lot for my running, especially if I'm going into the wilderness, like in, um, in a um, more remote place, um, hikers use these jackets. So this is a three layer jacket. So the three layer jacket is the same again, it's the, the um, outer fabric bonded to the waterproof fabric, um, which will either be um, a coating or an actual membrane, it's usually an actual membrane. Um, but for example, this on, Ava jacket here, you can see that there, you've got the outer jacket here, that's the durable outer there, usually a ripstop fabric, fabric. Then you've got the waterproof fabric, which was the white layer here, but you can't actually see that because they've added, for a three layer jacket, they add a scrim layer here. So this is, it's usually gray and it's usually knitted or woven fabric. And, and that makes the jacket a little bit heavier, usually. Um, there are some exceptions. For example, um, there's a wrap jacket called the Flashpoint, and that's only 185 gram, and that's a three layer jacket. So this is a, um, it's known as a scrim, this layer. Uh, it's durable, but sometimes heavier. Um, but I like these because it feels so much nicer next to your skin, especially if you're wearing a t-shirt. If you feel this, it's really, really soft inside. Whereas if you feel this, it's much more plasticky inside. But the reason that trail runners were more likely to wear a jacket like this than this is because this one weighs about 100 grams and this one, I'm not sure what it weighs, I can put it on my scales, but this one weighs probably about twice as much and it's twice as big. So you can see the difference there and you can see why trail runners wanting to go light and fast would opt for a 2.5 layer jacket rather than a 3.5 layer jacket. So I personally think three layer jackets have their place, especially for really long days it, when you're out in the wilderness and you really, really want to be super comfortable. Um, you're maybe a bit more along the lines of a hiker than a runner. Um, but this is the type of jacket I would pack if I knew that I was coming home to a nice hot shower in a few hours and um, I just needed something in my pack as an emergency jacket. Um, I wouldn't go out thinking, oh, I'm gonna wear this all day on the Cape Breath Ultra for 30 miles for eight days in a row or anything like that. I'd choose something more along these lines. Um, and then, so that's the five different types of waterproof jacket. And then I just wanted to just make it very clear because I've had several questions about this. Um, because people, um, they're not quite sure what makes a waterproof jacket and what makes a windproof jacket. So um, this is a windproof jacket. So this is the in Innovate um, a ACT wind shell. And you can see here, the, this fabric is, um, it's, uh, it's water resistant. Um, and on its own, it's fairly water resistant. It's, it's almost waterproof, but it's much more breathable than of actual waterproof fabric. But can you see here, the seams are not taped. So there's no tape over those seams, they're just seams. So there's a load of big holes in there that water droplets can get through. Whereas on a fully waterproof jacket, this one here, just gonna refer back to the on halo. If you can see here, there's tape over those seams. I don't know if you can see in the light just there. Oh, that. try and get that into the light there. Might be more easy for you to see on this jacket actually, because. The seams, yes, yeah, so the seams are a bit more visible here. So can you see along there, there's tape. It's just a small amount of tape, but there's tape there. So where that jacket's been sewn into place, where the waterproof fabric has been sewn into place, you've got seams um, taped, the seams are taped down. So that means it's fully waterproof. And that's what race organizers mean when they put on the mandatory kit list, you need taped seams. That's what you're looking for. Just a, a teeny bit of tape over the top of those seams to make the holes waterproof again. Okay, so that's four different types of jacket. There is one other type of jacket, which runners don't often use. It's more hikers, but if you're running in a really cold place, 
uh, really freezing, like in the snow, maybe you're doing one of those Arctic races or something like that, then you might want to consider this type of jacket. It is... Um, it's Paramo. So you might have heard of this before if you've come to trail running from a hiking background. So Paramo's waterproof fabrics work in a completely different way to the membrane at, or the coating way. Um, those fabrics are at an actual barrier to the to the rain. Um, but this is um, it works a bit like your wicking clothing. So um, I probably need a dummy to put these on. But but this is the jacket here. So it doesn't look like a waterproof, does it? It, it doesn't look like a, a barrier, a physical barrier there. So what happens here is this fabric in here is water loving and it would it's it's actually called a pump layer and it will pump any moisture through the fabric. It will pump it all the way to the outside and this is a water resistant layer on the outside. So not only is it preventing as much water as it can from getting in, when any water does get in, like even if you were to jump in a river and get completely soaked what this um, pump action liner would do is draw the water away and out of the jacket um, so you are completely you um, if you get wet inside you're going to become completely dry from the pump action and that doesn't it's just a pumping action it works a bit like animal fur so it doesn't re rely on you being warmer inside the jacket than outside of the jacket which is what the membranes rely on they rely on um, you being warmer inside the jacket than the air is outside the jacket so that you're creating water vapor so it can escape through the tiny holes but the holes are too tiny to let in the water droplets on the other side so this jacket works completely in a different way to that so that's paramo for you there um, and you can um, you can repair these jackets as well um, if they get a hole in the the pump action still works so if you just sew, sew up the hole put a bit of a patch on then they work as well so that's just something for you to consider if you're running in really really cold places they're very comfortable but they're very heavy and they're very bulky and they're very very warm so I've worn these jackets for hiking in Scotland in the winter um, I would run in they do a, a really lightweight version they, they do do a really lightweight version of these jackets um which is designed for runners in cold weather um but yes um i i wouldn't run in one of these unless it was really really super cold I'd definitely take it to the arctic with me though okay fantastic so that's the five types of jackets we've got everything from bin bag to two layer 2.5 layer three layer and paramo so that's five different types of jackets so if you're in the shop you can easily work out which one they are now okay so just take a couple of questions before i get onto the features of the jackets um which is a very important thing um oh maybe i'll talk about breathability and waterproofing first actually because then the features make more sense. Yeah, next I'll talk about waterproofing and breathability of the jackets. Okay, so first of all, we have um, Andrew Bell saying happy holidays, fantastic. Well, I'm not actually on holiday. <laughs> I'm not on holiday until probably Christmas Eve, but uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Happy holidays to everybody. Um, Guy Greater X says, if your jacket has no tape seams, does it count as a waterproof jacket? Ah, so I've just been through that, so hopefully that's answered your question, Guy. Thanks very much for um, the five pounds there on the super chat so yes I've answered that question if your jacket doesn't have taped seams it means that when it's been sewn there's lots of little holes in the seam and that cannot be considered as a waterproof jacket so hopefully that's understandable now having demonstrated that um, Paul Waldron says um, hello and from the experience of, of a race kit check um, he's just answering Guy there, a waterproof jacket has to have taped seams. Um, doesn't help me with my paramo, hopefully this will change. So that's interesting, Paul. So um, so I've so race organizers potentially aren't letting you take paramo jackets on races because um, of their lack of taped seams. So paramo jackets don't actually need taped seams because they work in, in that way that I've just described, a bit like animal fur, where they actively pump the water out. So um, so yes, I would think that a more enlightened race organizer would understand that, but you might have to send them a message prior to the race if just to check that you'll be allowed that if you are thinking of taking a paramo jacket into a race. So um, Paul says again, he went wild swimming 
on Snowden on the Snowden Trail and then put his Paramo jacket and trousers on. He was dry and warm in no time. Yeah, so I um, when I worked on Trail Magazine, which is a walking magazine, we got taught about Paramo and um, they actually supply Mountain Rescue with Paramo gear because um, they they say they said this analogy that you can literally jump in a stream and they said that some of the Mountain Rescue people did jump in a stream to test this out. They jumped in with all their Paramo gear on and then they walked around until they dried off and they said that they the, the Paramo kit actively pumped all the water away from them. It took a while, but they were dry eventually. So that would not happen with uh, a normal hard um, membrane or coating uh, jacket. So um, uh, Guy Greatrex, would you ever use a dry robe before or after a run? Yes, I would. So um, there's a film, uh, I'll, I'll link to it here afterwards. Uh, there's a film um, called New Gear for March 2019. And in there I use one of those, um, I kind of, I take my t-shirt off and on again um, under one of these dry robe things where um, kind of fleecy, towely lined things. And they've got poppers down the side like that. And you can really easily get all your wet clothes off and then all your dry ones on underneath it without um, disturbing your modesty or anyone else's for that matter. So yes, I would definitely use one of those dry robe things, the toweling robe things, because it makes it so much easier to get changed if you're in a car park after a run. So yeah, that's a great shout there, Guy. Um, so James Aubrey says, Hello, finally managed to join a stream. Fantastic. It's great to have you here, James. That's fantastic. Kev JH says, um, stick an emergency poncho in your pack. It's super light and it hardly takes up any space. Yes. So that's what I was saying here about the bin bags. So you can always just take a bin bag in there. Um, I've used, I used the poncho actually on the Inca Trail in Peru. Um, I did have a waterproof, but the rain was such so monsoon like that the guides recommended to us that we all get a poncho. They handed them out actually. And um, they were went over everything so over our heads over our massive backpacks and over the front of our waterproofs and all the way down to kind of shin level and they were so handy because the rain was so strong for such a short period of time you really could just wander along looking like <laughs> looking like an alien in these uh, slightly see-through ponchos um, and then after about ooh, like 10 minutes it had stopped and we just took them off and it just meant that not nothing was soaking um, and it doesn't matter it was wasn't too windy because in Britain if you wore a poncho on Snowden you'd just be blown off wouldn't you because it's so windy um, but it was quite sheltered but just really really rainy so there is a definite um, you, you see them on tourists don't you in cities usually but there's definitely a use for a poncho um, in some some places um, so Paul says uh, Paramo does not pass a kit check because it has no tape seams. So Lakeland 50 and rat races don't accept them. All right. OK, so so interesting. Um, did you did you email the race organizers to um, argue the case there, Paul? Or did you get anyone from Paramo to sort of give you special dispensation? And um, that might be worth doing as well. And then there's Guy Greatrex, who's just saying thanks to Paul, who answered his question about the tape scenes there. Right. OK, so I've answered everyone's questions. Keep them coming, everybody. We are going now. Now I'm going to talk about the waterproofing of a jacket. Um, so. So basically, there's two ways that you can waterproof one of the normal type of jackets, not the power mode. I'm not going to be talking about the power mode jackets um, from now on. I'll let you know if I am. But um, basically, I'm going to be talking about this type of jacket from now on, the, the normal either three layer jacket or, or the 2.5 layer jackets um, for trail runners. So um, I'm going to be talking about this type of jacket from now on. So um, there's two ways of waterproofing a jacket. So um, they're, they're either, they're either going to be micro pores. So they're tiny holes that allow water vapor to escape and they repel droplets. So droplets can't get in, but water vapor from your sweat can get out. And there's hydrophilic. So um, so that I'm just checking my notes here to make sure I get this right. Uh, but this conveys moisture at a molecular level. So the pressure inside the jacket has to be larger than the outside of the jacket. So it only becomes breathable when you become active. So um, so that's the two types of waterproofing. And waterproofing is measured by this thing called hydrostatic head, which is sometimes a, a number, usually in the thousands, the tens of thousands, um, and then with a HH for hydrostatic head. So if you see something like it's 
20,000 HH waterproof. That means it's got a hydrostatic head of 20,000. So what that means basically is that it means how much water pressure um, the jacket material can withstand in a large, large column on top of it before some of the water comes through. So if you imagine um, a column of water, it will be um, uh, a lot longer than this one. Um, but if you imagine a column of water stood on top, there's a certain circumference um, diameter that needs to be in a certain length that they keep pouring the water in. And at the moment when the water starts to come through the jacket and um, uh, and through that fabric, that means it's reached its hydrostatic limit. And so it, it gets that number. So a lot of jackets have um, about 2,000, um, that I've seen that a lot, 2,000 um, hydrostatic head there. So that's, but with from the major brands, if they say it's waterproof, it's waterproof. I, I've never worried about the hydrostatic head figure in my life. And I wouldn't advise, <laughs> I wouldn't advise that you even bother looking at it if you're getting a jacket from a reputable company. And I'll go through some of those examples at the end. So then, Waterproofing. So I've had several people say to me, so I really need a jacket that's waterproof. Um, well, obviously waterproof, it's a waterproof jacket, but that they've used jackets and they haven't been waterproof. So so I just wanted to share with you my uh, my very candid thoughts here. Um, what Waterproof jackets are waterproof. So this fabric here of the Om Halo is totally waterproof. However, if I put this jacket on, you'll notice some glaring, a glaring thing about this jacket in that there are holes in it. So I've got two big holes here like that. And this is all jackets, not just the Om Halo. I'm not singling this one out. Um, and there's a big hole here and there's a hole here as well. So you can do what you can with these. Um, a lot of jackets have a Velcro thing. This one's elasticated here. Um, you can do the zip right up and have it under your chin. You can even put the, put the hood up here like that, really batten it down. And you can pull, there's a draw cord here. You can really pull the draw cord to get it all like flat around your body like that. But however hard you try, there are holes in your jacket. and if you're running in the rain for any amount of time, water is going to get in through those holes. The fabric is waterproof, but water is going to get in. And that is going to happen for any jacket that you buy. So in my mind, no jacket is really fully waterproof. The only way you're going to be fully waterproof is if you're in a car. And you're not going to be in a car ever unless you're <laughs> unless you're driving home, unless you've failed. So um so that's just my thoughts on waterproofing. And um, so you've got big holes in the sleeves, the cuffs, the head and the hips here as well. You never stay dry when you're running. Um, and I'll come to this as well with the issue of breathability as well. Um, but the way that you get around this is that you wear things underneath which dry quickly. So you're going to get damp. You're going to get damp here. You're going to get damp here, especially if you've got long sleeves on the cuff. The ends of the sleeves are going to get damp here and here. Your gloves are going to get damp and the bottom of your T-shirt might get damp, especially if you need to go to the loo and you need to um, kind of de uh, the, um, get your trousers off and, and you sort of flip this layer up and then a load of water gathers in here and then you pull it back down again and water everywhere. So you're going to get a bit wet when you trail run in the rain. So the important thing is to wear things underneath that are going to dry quickly once the rain stops and you're presumably continuing running or you've stopped somewhere and you get access to a drop bag or something like that and you can change kit. So you're going to get wet basically even if you wear a waterproof um so i don't know if that uh, has um blown anyone's mind but um i just think that's really important from any manufacturer as if you can buy the most uh like a 400 quid jacket from arcteryx or something like that you're still gonna get wet if the rain doesn't stop for ages and ages uh, because of the holes here and here and here so that brings me on quite nicely to breathability and i know that Companies can say all they like about breathability. Oh, we use this technology, we use this technology. Oh, this is breath more breathable than this. They've got figures for it. There are tests for breathability. I've had so many jackets. I've tested probably uh, 20, 50 jackets probably over the years for trail magazine and also for trail. 
And I have not found one jacket that is truly, truly and utterly breathable when you're running. There is no jacket that I've found in the world that will could w that will transfer the water vapor that you're creating through sweat out of the jacket and away from you you're always going to get wet and clammy if you start running wearing a waterproof jacket and that's why i like to wear a windproof jacket for as long as i can so a windproof jacket like this this is the atc um the atc jacket wind shell jacket from innovate here and I really enjoy wearing windproof because the wind goes through it, so you've got a, a good level of breathe, um, the, sorry, the wind doesn't go through it, so you've got a good level of um, of warmth from this jacket, but it's also, it's not as, uh, it's not a, a, a fully shut down membrane like these waterproof jackets are, so you it breathes a lot better. The difference between wearing a waterproof jacket, so it's all plasticky and brrr, and the, a windproof jacket is much more just like an outer, a nice outer layer that you can wear um, until it's it's really really raining this will take a light shower so um so yes uh nothing is breathable if you're sweating a lot um so so then what happens is you need a jacket with certain features on it that you can vent so some people like those pit zips um we'll get onto that within the features in a few more minutes um and you can do various things with the zip here but obviously that means you're going to get wet here but but basically being in a waterproof jacket during a rain shower is it's like you for me if you're running still and it's raining you're going to get wet you're going to get moist Eve you're going to get moist and you're going to be damp and you're going to be soggy but the point of a waterproof is that you're going to be warm and moist and damp and soggy so for me a waterproof doesn't keep me dry i know that's a really funny thing to say it i'm not expecting even to be totally dry when i'm wearing a waterproof however expensive it might be but what i am expecting is that when it stops raining or it just goes to a light drizzle all of the things i'm wearing underneath my waterproof are going to dry out and then uh, and during that time i'm going to be warm inside my damp waterproof so i'm just going to start reading some of the questions there because um, i'm sure that some people will have some some opinions on this which is going to be really interesting um so uh um uh yeah so guy greater x is saying i hear you don't want to wear short sleeves with a jacket due to skin contact is this true um so that is that i would not want to wear um a t-shirt i'm wearing a t-shirt now under this jacket just to demonstrate it i wouldn't want to wear a t-shirt under a 2.5 layer jacket because it is really clammy like i will do but it just doesn't feel as good as wearing a t-shirt under a fabric like this which is a lot more comfortable on the skin. So a fabric like this, a three layer fabric with a scrim is gonna be a lot more comfortable. It's just gonna be heavier and bulkier. So I use this for remote mountain running where I'm gonna be probably doing more like walking and power hiking than flat out running. I take this with me on like a two hour kind of, or a really fast mountain race, like anything from two to four hours maybe. Um, but I take a jacket, a three layer jacket for anything beyond the, like the whole, a whole day thing where I thought it's gonna be miserable all day. That's where I take a three layer jacket. So then some more questions here. Um, Bike in Motion says, depending on the temperature, yes, there is none, even if Gore and Co want to make us believe that. Yeah, so that's just going back to my point that I just don't think that any jackets are fully breathable and fully waterproof because of the holes here and here and here and here, and because of the amount of sweat that you can produce. It can't it can't get rid of that water vapor quick enough whilst you're running. Only if it's really cold or if you're running so slowly that you're not very sweating very much. And that's basically the only two times when you won't be producing water, loads of water vapor inside this jacket. The moment you put, I hate putting waterproof jacket on because I know the moment I put it on, I'm gonna get far too hot. So at that point, I, I think about maybe slowing my pace down a bit. Um, I, I take a layer off before I put a waterproof on and I do everything I can to keep myself vented. So if I've got uh, Velcro cuffs, I'll undo them so that every time you swing your arm, the hot air, you can feel it zooming out of your body. I'll maybe undo the hem a bit to make the hem um, less tight around my body because the water's like falling under gravity so you don't necessarily need it really tight unless it's really cold um and i'll um this is how i i yesterday it was raining in london 
and I was wearing this jacket and I put the hood around like this and then I didn't put the hood up like this because rain can go into here like this and also you can't breathe and then you just get vapor in like that. But what I did was I had it like this. I know that looks a bit strange. I look like I've just come off a spacecraft, but um, I had it just under here like this and that meant that there was the least water possible could get in there through that hole, but it still does. I mean, it just drips down and it comes in here and then it dr trickles down. So you can sort of do little micro adjustments like this to, because if you have it like that, then the water is going to fall down there. But if you have it like this, then hopefully it's less likely to happen. Okay, so let's just read some more questions here before I move on to the features that you wanna look for in a waterproof jacket, and then we'll move on to some actual recommendations based on my seven years of testing them. So um, the Paul Waldron says, it does feel, um, oh no, he says, I get colder and quicker in lower temperatures if my arms don't have covering and if my skin contacts the jacket directly. Yes, so basically inside this jacket will be a buildup of moisture vapor, and so so if you've not got long sleeves on with a 2.5 layer jacket like this with no nice comfy scrim there, then the water droplets will go, they'll form into droplets, they'll go back onto your skin and they make you feel colder. So um, yeah, a long sleeve jacket, a long sleeve base layer does the job of the scrim in a 2.5 layer jacket for you. Um, so Ian Oldham uh, is recommending arm guards. They're great under a waterproof jacket with a t-shirt combo. So yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, arm guards there. So if you've gone out in a t-shirt and then oh my goodness started raining want to put a waterproof on get your arm guards on first pop your waterproof on that can make you a bit hotter and you're going to be hot in the waterproof jacket anyway but if it's going to make you more comfortable then maybe that's a good thing to do so experiment it's all about finding your personal um your what you want to do personally as well um guy gray trex is agreeing arm guards great shout that's this is really good keep the chat coming ian oldham says keeps everything breathable um paul says he gets the arm guards thing but he tends to just wear a long sleeve t-shirt and if not needed just roll up the sleeves so there's the other option there also if you're wearing a long sleeve t-shirt you can't lose an arm like with arm cards you could take one off and drop one by accident and then you've lost your arm so another um a good point there for um a long sleeve t-shirt um and it saves costs as well um uh kev jh says you can tuck a buff under the sleeves yes yeah, so you could tuck a buff just here um uh and uh ian oldham is replying to paul about the arm guards versus long sleeve t-shirt thing and ian oldham is just saying that it's bulky if you pull the sleeves up so yeah so yeah it's just down to personal preference um everybody okay so um so we've established now that no jacket is truly waterproof um, in the opinion of Claire Max said, and no jacket is really, really breathable. In my opinion, also having worn them for years and years and years, um, no company is going to tell me that waterproofs are really breathable when I'm running because I get sweaty in all of them. That is just final. Okay, so the features that you want to look for in a waterproof jacket. So hopefully this will help you choose. Um, some waterproof jackets, the lightest one, this is like 100 grams, which is an amazing weight for a waterproof jacket that will get you through a race kit check. Um, so this jacket is, hasn't got any pockets. So um, often with trail running jackets, there's a chest pocket just here. This one hasn't got any pockets. I'm just gonna stand up and show you. There's no pocket on the back or anything or the side. I haven't found a pocket. If anyone knows that there's a pocket here and I've just not found it, then do write in. Um, so that is, so the lightest weight jackets, those lightweight 2.5 layer jackets, they often don't have a pocket. So that is fine if you're just using it as um, a race jacket and you're just gonna get it out in an emergency, that's fine. Um, you're probably gonna have a backpack maybe as well. So you might not need pockets because you'll have the uh, all the backpack um, pockets as well. Um, so there, there's another uh, really lightweight emergency jacket that I use a lot. Um, from the North Face, uh, this one here, and this is the same. This does not have a pocket. Um, it's just a really lightweight jacket, and it's um, the hood is a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit more to the hood with the elastic thing there, but no, that doesn't have a pocket either. Um, put other pockets, ah, oh, here we go. This is the type of pocket that trail running jackets often have. 
they often have a chest pocket like this. So it's just, there's the top of the zip and the hood and pocket just here. And often it's elasticated in here so that you can stuff a phone. You might want to check that your phone fits into the pocket because uh, that's often a place where you'll put a pocket. Um, but just even if the pocket has waterproof or water resistant zips on, it's highly likely that you will get some water ingress into that pocket. So if you've not got your phone in a waterproof pouch, then put it in a plastic bag, like even a plastic bag like this, uh, just a generic normal waterproof bag that will waterproof a phone you don't have to spend tons of money on buying a dry bag or anything for your phone um, because even if the zip is waterproof there'll always be a teeny tiny gap just here and um, there should be a hood thing but there'll always be a teeny tiny gap there and it just it just will in my experience always get um wet inside a pocket so then there's a chest type of pocket or if you've got more of a hiking background, you might have a pocket with, this is the Rab Atmos jacket, and this is the actual jacket that I took with me on the Cape Wrath Ultra. It's 300 grams, um, which is a lot heavier than that, um, the arm one, 100 grams, but it's, I just felt safe in this jacket in the mountains. I knew I was gonna be doing a lot of hiking, so I wanted a bomb-proof jacket. Now this uh, hiking jacket has pockets just here and here which actually fits quite well with a uh, running pack because you can reach these two pockets. If the pockets were up here and here, you'd struggle to open those because the straps of the waterproof, of the straps of your backpack would go across them. So this, these pockets actually sat below. Um, usually in a running jacket, they don't make pockets here because when you're running, if you've got stuff in there, they, it bangs about and it's annoying. So they usually pop the pocket here and then you've just got stuff up here and it's not flapping around like that when you run um, but I actually appreciated the pockets down here on the Kate Rath Ultra because I was always wearing my bag the bag came around here so I had bag uh, strap pockets here and then I had pockets here so just something to think about um, the placing of the pockets um uh, kev jh also comes in there and says innovate do one with lower pockets as well so it's just worth thinking take your running pack to the shop and try the waterproof on with your backpack on top of it and just make sure that you can access all of the pockets that it has when you've got your backpack done up so that's pockets um Yep, so the light ones will not have a pocket, heavier ones will start to have pockets. You could also find that some have a pocket across there. Um, one of my Salomon Windproofs has a pocket across there. It's sort of, um, it's a bit like what you'd find in cycling, having pockets just there. However, when I wear that with a backpack, that if I don't put the zip half open into the middle, it digs into my spine. So um, just be careful with pockets across the back there. So um, Kev JH says, that's why he chose the storm shell with the top pocket. Yes, so um, yeah, if you have things in the bottom pockets, they can move around. Um, Guy Greater X says, what do you think about getting a bigger jacket so it can go over your backpack? You've beat me to it, Guy, because that was on one of my lists of things to cover. So for you, I will cover that one now. So larger fit. Um, as you can see there, that jacket wasn't really tight around me. I would definitely always go for a larger fit rather than a tight fitting fit um, for a waterproof jacket because not only can you fit an insulating layer underneath if you need to, it's, if it suddenly turns really cold, um, you can also fit it on over your pack. So what I like to do is run along with a pack on and I'll have my waterproof jacket sort of stuffed in the top there and then I've made a film about that I'll link to that here actually I've made a film about packing a pack um, and what I put in it um, and I can pull my waterproof jacket out without taking the pack off without any faff I'll just put it on over everything you look like a hunchback but the advantages are that you've quickly got your jacket on so you're not cold and you've um, you've protected the actual material of your backpack from getting um, wet, which makes it heavier um, and uncomfortable. So yes, definitely always buy a jacket a little bit bigger than your actual size for comfort. It also allows air to circulate a bit more. So if it's raining and you're, you know, you're building up a bit of water vapor inside, you can sort of flap it around a bit and um, or 
maybe undo this bit here and wind will go through. Um, if it's really close to your skin, it's, it feels even hotter than before. So definitely a larger fit. The other advantage of a larger fit um, waterproof is that if you, God forbid, have um, um, happen upon an emergency situation and you've got a larger um, waterproof in your bag, if the person that you're helping is larger than you, you can give them your waterproof jacket to help keep them warm. Um, whatever the situation is, um, a larger jacket than yourself is always going to fit more people than less people. So um, that's just another reason for buying a larger one too. So just um, just uh, have a look at the questions here as well. Um, Bike in Motion said, if you are serious for waterproof jackets, um, they can recommend the Endura MT500 from Scotland. And they know about rain. Yes, they certainly know about rain in Scotland. It's highly breathable and has pit sips too, but it's rather heavy. Ah, oh, thank you for that re re uh, recommendation. That's great. Um, Paul says his problem with larger fit is is a gaping hood um, he has long arms so he needs a large but a skinny body so the hood and the neck are gaping which <laughs> which result in soaking wet he just learned to live with it well I would say that people's heads that's funny isn't it because people's heads don't get larger and smaller depending on whether their bodies are larger and smaller you don't get a really large man with a really large head as well people's heads kind of stay the same so i'm really surprised that the hoods are getting bigger to reflect larger bodies um but the larger i would say that the larger hoods um if you're going to go for a larger jacket then you probably want to be looking at a hood with a little bit of adjustment to it so like for example this north face one here so it might be a large hood but you can actually draw it in with this draw cord and then you probably be looking for a hood um uh, adjuster around the side here as well like either side of your face you probably want adjusters there so I don't know if this power mode yeah so this yeah so um that one's got an adjust this one um the hood, more hood adjustment comes with heavier jackets so and and like more like hiking jackets so that's more like the three layer jackets like this one from Hagloss um but see that's got um a hood adjuster just here and it's also got a hood adjuster at the back here as well so that's what you're looking for you're looking for some adjustment around the back of the head to sort of cinch the hood in and then you're looking for adjustment around the face as well to sort of cinch that into your face shape so i would recommend that you look for a jacket with some hood adjustment if you're finding that the hood is too large and gapy or if your hood is too large and gapy you've already got a jacket just sew it at the back like get someone to help you just fold it over at the back and um I don't know like just tape it down with something like you can get some really strong tape uh, maybe not so I did say so but if you do that your waterproof jacket won't be waterproof anymore so just tape it down at the back and and um so that it's not gaping all over the place or um yeah, that's what I that's what I do is just a temporary solution. Um, uh, that Ghana bike says uh, has donated four pound ninety nine to the super chat. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, he says hi. Might have missed this already, but what's the difference between shower and rainproof? It always confuses me. Um, fantastic so uh yeah so i have covered this already but the main difference between shower proof and waterproof is uh shower and rainproof um that is confusing actually shower and rainproof um i think what you want to look for is waterproof versus shower or rainproof so shower proof is most probably going to be one of these um Sorry for everyone else, I'm just recapping very quickly. Um, shower proof is gonna be like this windproof, so there's no tape seams in that one, whereas fully waterproof is gonna be tape seams. So this is a three layer jacket, but you can see there that the seams are taped, so that's fully waterproof. This one is a 2.5 layer jacket and the seams are also taped, but you can't see it as much because the tape is, you can see it sort of there, there's the tape. The, the tape is just see-through, so it's over the seams. You can see the seams, but the tape is there. It's just not very visible on this on this picture, but you can, there's, there's definitely tape, this tape over those seams. So that's the difference between rain, fully rain, fully waterproof, and just showerproof or drizzle proof. Okay, so, um, ah, so Paul says it's the neck area that gapes a bit. Hmm, so yeah, so just gather it there and stick it down. Um, yeah, or tie, tie a bit of it into a hairband, or I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to see that. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you at a race or something and we can, we can have a look at it. Um, 
Matt Palmer says that he really likes the on cam Leica jacket, nice soft stretchy material, packs down quite small as well. Yes, I've got some, uh, yeah, I've got, um, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got some, yeah, I've got some suggestions for running uh, for um, running jackets coming up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six suggestions of really good jackets, and the OnCam Like It is one of those. So yeah, you've beat me to it there. Um, so Steve Horton says he has jackets with no hood adjustment, but finds that wearing a peaked cap stops the hood from more moving and falling over my eyes. That's a really great suggestion. And yes, I've I've forgotten, but I do actually do that too. Um, yeah, uh, I'll often use a buff as well, just to sort of um, make the hood not move around too much as well. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, so just before we move on to the jacket suggestions, just want to talk about a few more features that you want, might want to consider. So half zips rather than a full zip. So they are called a smock design and um, they are lighter because there's less zip involved. Um, and you could argue that there's more waterproof in those because there's less zip um, for potential water ingress there. So, but the only downside that I find with the smock, I know that Marcus Scottney used um, the Montaigne um, Minimus smock on the Dragon's Bat Race and he loved it, he thought it was brilliant, but he didn't really take the jacket off. Whereas I hate running in a waterproof jacket and I always wanna take it off. I, I run basically in a t-shirt, even if it's winter, I run really warm. Um, so I don't like a smock so much because it's really difficult to take a smock off if you're wearing a backpack. Um, I can actually take a waterproof jacket or any full zip jacket off when I'm wearing a backpack while still wearing it. You feed one out, feed one out, one arm out, and then you just put it in your back like that. You can't do that with a smock. I can't anyway. Um, if you can, then well done. Um, so that's half zip versus full zip. Um, we've covered larger fit, we've covered pockets. Venting. Um, so I mentioned before that waterproof jackets aren't fully waterproof because of the holes and they're not fully breathable because you they just can't be. They're just, you just never get a jacket that you can run in without getting sweaty and clammy. So for this reason, you've got to be good at allowing your jacket to vent whenever possible. So um, undoing the reflective cuffs, uh, the um, Velcro cuffs, letting the, the warm air flow out, um, undoing the hip adjuster so that warm air can flow out that way as well. Whilst you're running, you're sort of squeezing the air out. Um, and there's pit zips as well. So a lot of people swear, like especially in walkers, like they swear by a pit zip. Um, personally, I don't find them very good, basically because it's really hard to get a pit zip that you can operate just with one hand. They're awkward and you've you've sort of got to find the end of it there with one hand and then pull it down with the other hand. And then of course you blooming forget, don't you? When it starts raining and you're like, why am I getting wet on one side? Oh no, I still got the pit zip. And then you're struggling to do it up just with one hand and just really awkward. And also I find that, it, that well, the hot air, it, it doesn't really go downwards necessarily. I know it does make a difference, but you sort of want a pit zip here rather than anything. You just want it kind of here, but you would never get one there because um, obviously the zip, um, it, water would ingress there and that would not be good. So yeah, so you can vent with pit zips, but um, I'm not a fan of pit zips. Um, it's called temperature management. So I suppose before you put a waterproof on, you'd probably want to think, even if it's quite cold, you might want to think about taking a layer off. Not always, but you just might, if you've been wearing some kind of insulated jacket or a long sleeve jacket and you've got a t-shirt underneath, you might want to consider taking it off before you put the waterproof on. Okay, so then that's that done. Um, draw cords and thumb loops. Okay, so draw cords, we've discussed a little bit about the draw cords around the hood, so I won't cover that again. Um, stuff here and stuff around here. They tend to be in the more heavier weight jackets, so not necessarily the main trail running jackets that you're going to be using. Um, the hood, you probably will want some form of little peak on the hood. So this, just going back again to this um, arm jacket, there's there's a, a piece of bit, a little bit, sort of, it's not um, it's a bit of reinforced type fabric here just to just to make sure the hood doesn't just, just flap over your head like that so look for a little bit of a reinforced peak there this um the, the heavier the jacket the the, the more um reinforced you'll get with the peak so this is actually quite um feels quite strong here quite rigid that peak there um and in a, a full-on hiking jacket 
um, in full on hiking jackets, this one hasn't got one, but you might get a piece of wire across as well. Um, so that's a bit more of a fully working hood there. But in something like a windproof jacket, you wouldn't get any you won't get any reinforcement in the hood. You've got a no, there's no elastic on this bit, but it's just, um, it's just a, there's no reinforcement there at the hood. So that's just something to bear in mind with the hood. Um, and then thumb loops. Um, so some jackets, I know there's, um, there's a, a really good jacket that I tried. Um, I, it was um, the Ultimate Direction Ultra V2 jacket. And that had um, little, gloves that you sort of put over the end of the sleeve so um that was a really interesting thing um i would always recommend taking gloves but it is just quite a good interim solution um but a lot of jackets have thumb loops in here so um with those you want to make sure that the arm is long enough so that you can actually put your hand into the thumb loops there's no, it's no use um if you have to keep your arm bent at all times just to reach the thumb loop but these can be nice I mean they do provide some level of warmth and waterproofing for your hand there um, and they, they do feel comfortable and they keep the jacket down and they're quite nice the only problem comes is if you've got it on this hand like I've got a long sleeve top with a thumb loop and a waterproof with a thumb loop. And yesterday I was using both with the thumb loops at the same time. And then I was like, oh, I wonder what pace I'm going. I wonder what the time is. And I was trying to get to my watch and you can't get to your watch if you've got thumb loops on. So you have to take them off and you have to scrunch it all back. And then you have to look at your watch. So that's my only bugbear with thumb loops is that I really like them, but I can't see my watch. So that's the only thing about those. Um, uh, yes, and just a quick note there from Paul Way. He says he has that ultra direct, ultimate direction jacket. Um, the the glove that goes over the top is a great idea. But I'm sorry, I haven't got one to demonstrate to you. Um, that no, that one doesn't have it either. Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't go over the thumb. Apparently, it just goes over the fingers. So your thumb is always exposed in that ultimate direction ultra v v two jacket. So I think I've covered, I've covered the five types of waterproof. I've covered um, waterproofing and breathability and my candid thoughts on that. And then I've also covered the features that you might want to look for in a waterproof jacket. So now that you all know exactly what to look for in a waterproof jacket, I'm gonna give you some top tips for ones that I've used in the past or that I have tested um, during my time on Trail Running Magazine. And these are ones that are really good. And I'm, I just want to say that all of the all of the major outdoor brands that are making trail running gear are making good jackets. No one is making a rubbish jacket. So what you need to look for is the features that you personally want in a jacket. So that might be a pockets that open upwards rather than downwards, or you might want elasticity in the hood, or you might want um, a really, really light jacket, or you might want stretchy material. Um, so no one's making a rubbish jacket. It's just up to you what uh, what features you want on that jacket. So first of all, um, these are my recommendations. There's six here, and I'd love to hear yours as well. So so keep them coming on the chat. I want to hear all your recommendations for jackets that you found worked really well in the past. Um, so um, I'm just gonna take that away. Um, Right, so first of all, the Montaigne Via Minimus Stretch Ultra Jacket. So all of these are 2.5 layer jackets. They're all for, good for trail running. So that's coming up as 192 grams. Um, these weights are all for a men's size medium, I'm assuming. And that's uh, the retail price of that one is 165 pounds. So you can probably find it cheaper online. So that's the Montaigne Via Minimus Stretch Ultra Jacket. Um, really like that jacket. Stretchy, lightweight, and um, it just feels bomb proof. Um, then you've got the Innovate AT slash C Storm Shell waterproof, which is again 2.5 layer. It's a little bit lighter, a few hundred, a few tens of grams lighter. It's 175 grams, and that is priced retail price is 170 grams. So I'm sure you are. I'm sure you're going to find that cheaper online. Um, but I've been using the ATC um, 
wind shell and uh, I haven't used the storm shell but I hear from people in the wild ginger running um, Facebook uh, gear gear test Facebook group that it's um, it's a really really good jacket so definitely check that one out then there's the ultimate direction ultra v2 jacket um, that's a really similar weight it's 174 grams again 2.5 layer a little bit more expensive it's 180 grams but um, again I'm sure you can find it cheaper online um, so yeah that one's really good the only thing I would say in the women for that one is I'd go possibly up a size, a size bigger than you usually do because the fit comes up quite small. Um, then there's the Salomon Bonatti jacket, um, which is uh, £145, so a little bit cheaper on the retail price, but uh, possibly for that reason it's 200 grams. So this is again a 2.5 layer jacket and I think I have, um, I think I've heard that it, it even has um, a, a a sort of a concertina bit in the back so that you can actually wear it with a um over your backpack um i think one of the salam jackets definitely has that so it may be the bonatti so check that out then the om cam Leica jacket so this is the original jacket from om the original mountain marathon and this is a little bit heavier it's 225 grams so considering the innovate and the ultimate direction ones were 175 grams that's a little bit quite a bit heavier but for that you get more features pockets and you get the stretch fabric and you also get that really nice kind of brushed feel to the fabric so it does it's not like really rustly scrunchy waterproof so definitely um i've heard a lot of good things about those and i've um i've got a not a lot of other om kit so definitely um recommending that one and that's uh, about 180 pounds but again i'm sure you can find it cheaper online um then finally i'm um, going to recommend the uh, jacket from ron hill ron hill's always a really good price point it's um 140 pounds for the uh, 2.5 layer infinity fortify i know some of you will probably have the trail tempest already um i can't see that they're making that anymore it's still on sale um in some places if you've got the right size you can pick one up for about 80 pounds that's the trail Tempest and that was a really good jacket but right now they're making the Infinity Fortify which looks like a, a really good um, running jacket nice and light um, and 140 pounds there so a little bit less than all the other jackets there so if you get a jacket any jacket from Montaigne, Innovate, Ultimate Direction, Arm, Salomon, Ron Hill um, there's tons of other brands as well um, uh, let me know if I've missed anyone out but they're the they're my main sort of go-to brands for good jackets and if you're getting a jacket from someone like them then you know that it's going to be good quality waterproof you just need to look at what features you want so whether that be the pockets or um or the venting opportunities or the the different types of zip full or or um or half length zip um and then just uh, what happens with the hood whether they've got thumb loops or not and just over the years if you you just sort of find out what you like and dislike about waterproof jackets um and yeah i i've definitely got uh favorites that i wear over and over again um and then a new one comes in and i'm like oh actually i like that so so yeah keep open-minded i would say i'm just going to read um a few more questions out um uh there's a yeah there was a really good comment about wearing a peaked hood from steve horton that i really like that um that guy on a bike saying thanks well ginger love the gear chats keep up the good work thank you um paul said he likes steve horton's comment about the cap um paul way says he has the ultimate direction jacket it's a great idea but bear in mind the thumb remains exposed oh yeah those the loops over over the sleeves um brilliant Matthew Paquet says, I suggest to hold the hood up with a headlamp when not look using the cap. That will prevent raindrops into your eyes and make visibility better. Okay, so you could also use a headlamp um, to keep the hood from, from getting into your eyes. Uh, quite an extreme option if it's not actually dark. Um, I always hate wearing a head torch if it's not dark. This is minimal. Um, yeah and that people think that's a good idea what about a suggestion for when not using the hood it always flaps around on my neck yes that is a great question okay so Paul Way is saying what happens to the hood when you're not wearing it so what I do is um, sometimes there is a rolly down thing and a popper but inevitably when you're running you can't find that and you you don't know how to 
put the hood away. So what I do is I I sort of wrestle the hood between my backpack and my shirt or or if it's not wet, I'll stick it down the back of my neck and I'll jam it down there. Um, I've got a quite flexible arm, so I'll really probably jam it down there so that it doesn't work its way out. Um, so that's what I'll do with a hood. Um, I wouldn't roll it up to do that. I'd just start jamming it all the way down because the further down you can get it, the, the least likely it is to pop up again and go, hello, and flap you on the head. So so yes, that, that's a really good question. Hope that helps you. Um, the uh, Paul Waldron says, the Montaigne spine jacket, it gets a good thumbs up from friends of his. That's a good suggestion. Lisa Francis says, as it rains mostly in winter, fluorescent waterproof jacket is good for bad visibility days. Yes, that's a really good point. And Ron Hill do make some really good high visibility clothing, whether it's got flashing lights in it, reflectivity all over it, or they just make some um, like really bright yellow jackets. So definitely give Ron Hill's range a check out. Out as well okay so um mark warner says um what do you think oh yeah matthew parquet says uh he pushes the hood between his back back and the backpack so that's that's what i do as well um and mark warner says what do you think to the alpkit gravitas jacket I haven't actually used that one but i know that alpkit is a really good great value brand so if it's not too heavy and if the features are all good then there's no reason why that jacket shouldn't be excellent um, so yet yeah, Paul Ways, just answering my question about the Salomon jacket, the Bonatti Pro has a concertina on the back for the backpack. So that's really awesome. You get um, a bit of a concertina effect on the backpack. Um, and John Hobson there says the Alpkit Gravitas is a great lightweight jacket and he uses it a lot for running and cycling. So fantastic. So somebody has answered the question there. So Paul's got to fly. He's got to go back to work, but it's been great. Okay. So everyone's off back to work now that it's two o'clock. Um, but yeah, I hope that's been really helpful. Um, I've actually got an announcement to make. Um, so bear with me if you can. It will just take two minutes. But um, next year, from 2019 onwards, I'm going to be making these gear chats in the evening because the feedback that I've been getting is that they really like the gear chat, but it's really hard for people to attend at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday. So I'm going to be making the gear chat in the evening. Um, I think the best time is probably about 8.30 p.m. because everyone's back from whatever running or whatever they've been doing. You can like eat your dinner in front of YouTube. Um, and the only day that I can actually do it on is a Wednesday. So I'm going to be making gear chat on a Wednesday evening at 8.30 p.m. Um, and what I thought I'd do is, um, because it's going to be a new series on the Wednesday night, I'm going to be having alternate interviews with people and then um so gear chat's going to be every fortnight so one one wednesday i'm going to have an elite athlete or a nutritionist or a physio to come in and answer your questions um we'll do that thing where the screen where it shows them on the screen and, and you'll see them instead of me um i don't know how to do that yet but um i've seen other youtubers do it so i'm going to try and um and then the next week we'll talk about some gear so it'll be me demonstrating something or showing you a load of stuff and we can have a great chat about that so hopefully oh there's um, some great feedback coming up on the chat there everybody likes the idea of that I just think it'll be easier than trying to fit it in in a lunchtime um you can just relax at the end of the day and we can maybe just get all your questions answered by elite athletes who knows maybe Killian Jornet will want to join us one Wednesday evening um I can't think of he's, he's got anything better to do I wouldn't have thought so so yeah so from January 2019 I'm going to be starting that and um I'm also on page yes Paul says we could drink wine at the same time yeah I could that could be the thing couldn't it we could have a, a glass of beer here or, or a glass of wine and we could all you know and ask some really rude questions to Killian Jornet um <laughs> but um but yeah, um, so yeah, so I'll be taking people's questions. And because I'm getting loads of questions in, um, I'm, I've started a tier on Patreon. It's the $10 a month tier. And basically that means that I um, answer your questions or ask your prep questions preferentially to the, the elite athlete or the nutritionist or the physio um, who I've got in to, um, for that week. Um, or in the gear chat, I'll ask, answer your questions preferentially, preferentially as well. So take a look at my Patreon page. If you just Google Wild Ginger Running Patron, it will come up um, and you can see if there's any um, tiers that appear to 
you um but it just gets you more access to the people that i'm going to be interviewing um and also <laughs> yes killian says he's busy painting the nursery yes yeah exactly i just couldn't think of anything better that he'd be doing on a wednesday evening than looking after his first baby um yeah so so yeah so from 2019 join me at 8 30 p.m on a wednesday for exciting gear chat and some really cool talks with some some people so um i'm gonna end this chat now um but if you want to comment in the comments below about the types of people you want to see me interviewing like they might be elite athletes they might be coaches they might be people that deal with running injuries or technique perhaps so let me know who you want me to talk to and I will uh, I'll get some ideas going right okay so oh no not yet not yet put it on the chat below when I when this is uploaded because <laughs> that uh, gives me that, that's good for the YouTube algorithms okay so thank you for all of the suggestions guys thanks for your great questions this week it's been amazing talking to you again um hope that that's fully pre prepped you on waterproof jackets next week we'll be covering um waterproof trousers just got a, a, a delivery from the om here waterproof trousers be covering waterproof trousers then the week after that i don't know what we'll be covering i'll ask one of my patrons because that's what they pay for and then tuesday the 25th of december is actually Christmas Day. So I'm not going to be broadcasting on Christmas Day. I'm not going to be doing a Queen's speech about gear or anything. Um, and I'm not going to be on Christmas Day. And uh, we'll just all have a day off on that day. And then we'll start again Wednesday, 8.30s in the new year. Okay. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'm going to end the live chat now. And um, yeah, thank you very much, everybody. And um, I'll see you on the trails. Fantastic. Oh, good. I'm glad the live show on Wednesday is going down well. Brilliant. Okay. Over and out, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>